Hi, this is Dina from An Empowered Life. And April from SweetSimpleDelicious.com. And today we are so excited to share with us our second webinar for Healthy Bodies, Healthy Minds. And that is Breaking Free from Sugar Addiction. Breaking the bonds with sugar. And today um, we are definitely going to start off with showing you some foods that people will normally eat on possibly an everyday basis and what the sugar content actually looks like. Some really good visuals. Yes. Um, portions and sugar. So let me just dive right in and we'll start with a little old chocolate chip cookie, which may seem so harmless. Can you bring that up really close so people can actually see the size of that? So this, here's the cookie. And I know most one. people would eat more than one of these. So this much sugar in this little cookie, and that's just one. So if you think, oh, I'm just going to have three cookies, take this times three. Yeah. That's can you, can you show that a little bit? Because I just actually changed the screen so we can really see these food. In the and these you are sugar really test tubes <laughs> to actually show how much sugar. So all that sugar in that one little yeah. cookie. Um, a piece of brownie. So I think it's a decent That's typical a fair size, size typical brownie, yes. but this is considered one serving of a brownie. Um, but this one serving of brownie has this much sugar in it. So this is um, considered the sugar for a two inch square of a brownie. Next, <clears throat> we have a Pop-Tart. <laughs> the dreaded Pop-Tart. The dreaded Pop-Tart. <laughs> The food of there are many children, children before children school. Children eat these before going to school. <laughs> they, and two in a package. People eat two. That's right. And this is the amount of sugar in this one frosting side up pop tart. Just one. And that much sugar. That yeah. So we've got almost two ounces of sugar in just one pop tart. So that's almost four ounces of sugar. If mm -hmm. anyone is having. Um, two Pop-Tarts to start their day. And let's remember from the last one, and in general, the more sugar that we eat, the more sugar that we crave. So starting the day mm -hmm. like this is only about to start a day of craving sugar. And not only that, but we'll talk about some of the other side effects that happen with having a lot of sugar or having just a meal with sugar and how that affects us. So I also have here a, a half cup of Jell-O. And a half cup of Jello has a significant amount of um, sugar. This, if you can see, there's a little bit of clear in this test tube, where actually the sugar content on this goes up to here. So at least three fourths of this test tube is full of sugar. So yeah, that is a lot of sugar. Mm -hmm. Which brings us to the finale the of dreaded sugar. soda. <laughs> Soda. It's a so, can of soda. So true. Which, and this is just, I get baffled about the size of, you know, like those 32 ounce sodas and things like that. Yeah, this is a can. This is a can of soda. Yes. And here's the sugar. And this there actually, is no, that's full. and I want to show you too, is <clears throat> this test tube size is double the size of all the other test tubes. Yeah. So this is 12 ounce soda, has like a double the size test tube completely yeah. filled to the top. And that is for one soda. And think about the people who drink two, three, four sodas. And okay. some people start their day with a soda because they feel like that gives them their energy. Yes, the caffeine in it. Well, there are so many other things yes. about soda. but we'll but, So that's today. why it's our grand finale of sugar <laughs> foods that people have so Visuals. often that, yeah, for a visual that we have, um, that really, I, I think people need to be aware of how much sugar really is in foods. Um, you don't realize it when you no. just think like with the cookie, especially baffles me because I am, I have certainly been guilty in the past of, I would not have one cookie. I'd ha mm -hmm. probably have three. Um, yeah, absolutely. and so having the visual to see exactly how much is in there, what you're having and it's awareness. Absolutely. When we are aware of what we're consuming, we can start to change it. When we're aware of not only what mm -hmm. we're consuming, but how we feel afterwards, we can change it. A lot of times we, um, and 
the standard American diet, the whole the whole standard American diet is guilty of this. We just consume it and we don't relate our feeling healthy to it. So we're not relating the fact that we're tired or feeling brain foggy. We're sluggish. We're not relating that. Mm-hmm. And I and one thing I just wanted to show you is during our webinar, we are going to be in the little left-hand corner, and I'm, we're also going to have our slides showing because we really love the effect of the visuals along with being able to hear us and see us. Um, there will be times I'll kind of change in between where you'll just see the slide, but for majority of the time, it's going to be the slide and us in the little corner. And I just love this slide in particular because we are talking today about sugar and its effects and... Um, and certainly how to kind of break free from that sugar um, addiction or excessive sugar use. Yes, the symptoms of having too much sugar mm-hmm. in case you are not even realizing that those are things that sugar could be causing in your life. Absolutely. And let's just kind of start from the top mm-hmm. um, with our slide. Looking at symptoms of excessive sugar use, the first one is obesity. Um, I think we can all kind of relate to the fact that if we eat more sugary um, foods, there is a great potential of gaining weight to the point of uh, BMI being considered obese. And depression, um, depression and brain fog. Sometimes mm-hmm. I feel like that goes hand in hand or they can one can certainly lead to the other. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people don't um, see the relationship between their foods and their moods yes. and the fact that depression is serious. And you can help yourself by choosing better foods. And um, difficulty with focus and attention. And I think that that is one strong piece is that, you know, lots of times children are um, going off to school starting with Pop-Tarts or have lots of sugary sweets in their lunch bag or as their school snacks. And unfortunately, these things are not fueling the brain and hence creating some brain fog sometimes creating some difficulty with being able to focus and give attention because maybe they're feeling a little bit more hyper as the next one or overactive from the sugar. And also they're not getting protein, which your brain needs protein to function. Or the essential fatty acids Mm -hmm. that are going to help stabilize sugar so that after they've had that high and they can't focus, they're then crashing. And lethargy happens, which is next on the list is just feeling exhausted, tired, unmotivated, um, just feeling like you don't want to do anything. And that easily can lead into mood swings where some people, you know, may feel, um, start feeling a little depressed, start feeling a little bit um, just down, not feeling like they want to do anything. Again, feeling unmotivated. Sugar blues. Mm Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, And when you're having those mood swings and feeling tired, fatigue is setting in. Um, There's also on a cellular level a whole different thing happening in your body with all of that excessive sugar, which leads us to diabetes and dementia. As possibilities. Yeah, really serious issues that can come from excessive sugar consumption. Absolutely. And we wanted to kind of show you guys this scan, this um, PET scan, and I'm actually just going to put it on for you guys to see the slide itself. This could possibly be my favorite slide. I saw this and it just made me go, wow, like Mm -hmm. this is pretty significant. So I wanted to discuss a little bit about it with you. Um, So this is your brain on sugar. And what they did was they looked, they did PET scans of a normal brain. And what is considered a normal brain is someone who is not obese and someone who has a, I think a well-managed intake of sugar within their day, within their diet. And then we have two other PET scan, brain scans, one of someone who uses cocaine and someone who is obese. And what is so interesting about these scans that is really being highlighted is that if you see in the normal brain, there's a lot of red, which is dopamine receptors that are that are acting correctly within the brain, that that neurotransmitter is able to function correctly. And the dopamine is helping you feel the pleasure. It's you experiencing the pleasure you get when the dopamine's in there, you're feeling it. Absolutely, and when you have a, a moderated amount of sugar that you're putting into your diet, 
your brain is able to function correctly, where it's able to process the sugar and that dopamine release happens where you find that particular food pleasurable. Yes. So what happens with someone who is obese or uses drugs actively is that the dopamine transmitter, the effects of it starts to dull. Yes, you your body isn't receiving the right amount of dopamine because you are getting it from outside sources. So your body, when you're about to have that donut or that, that sugary food, you get excited about it. And that's kind of the only window that you get the natural um, kick of your own dopamine. And then you are eating it. You're not actually even getting to enjoy it anymore because your body's um, your brain is not functioning in the right way to let you even enjoy it. So then you're looking yeah. for the next time. It's kind of like looking for the next sugar high, looking for the next high of whatever sort. And I think to go along with that is when people can note that you maybe have to start using something more often or more of it to get the same result. And that is exactly what's happening with the dopamine when that effect dulls. And one thing within the study, which we did put the link on the bottom for you to check it out yourself because it's really interesting. But one thing that really showed up with it was that with someone who um, has now created like this dull dopamine response, their, their dopamine tends to respond more when the thought of the food yes. or the drug occurs, but then when they physically have it, they don't have that sensation of feeling pleasure or even feeling satisfied. So that's what renders it to happen more and more. And this right here, I think gives an amazing scientific reason to why it is hard for people to break free of sugar addiction. And it's because it is chemical. Yes, and also another reason that I love this particular slide is because it's proof of the gut to brain connection mm -hmm. that what we're consuming yes. is affecting our brains and it's right here in front of us because sometimes it's hard to not make that correlation that yeah. not only your immune system is affected, but your brain, and I, and it's just so clear here, and I think that's so important and powerful. I do too. That's why I thought it was so important to share with you guys this slide, um, because I think it's you know one of the first pieces that we're actually seeing, starting to see connections, and I'm hoping we see connections, um, brain and gut, for many other things too. Yes. And I do feel that that is coming. Yes, I do as so, well. So it's exciting. So to go along with that. Let's kind of talk about sugar addiction and the perpetual cycle the of it. The vicious cycle. So first, number one, you eat sugar and you like it, you crave it, and it has those addictive properties. And one thing that's, you know, definitely um, happening but not highlighted is, you know, a lot of food companies are adding sugar to make their foods more addictive to the consumers. Yes. yes. So, and that takes us on a little tangent of when you're making food at home, you know what's in it um, and reading labels so that you know where there are hidden sugars because there are Absolutely. hidden sugars in so many places, which we'll touch upon later. Absolutely. Um, and the more sugar that you eat, the more your blood sh um, sugar levels are spiking. And then when they drop so rapidly, you're looking for it again. Mm -hmm. So that's when you're reaching for something else sugary. And like because we've just seen, it is literally lighting up receptors in our brain right. and that it is an addiction. We have to take very specific steps to try and reverse it, to make different choices so that you're not gonna be having to white knuckle through mm -hmm. it and that we can get you through it as easily as possible. Absolutely. Another important thing is that you're not alone. There are right. so many people that feel this way. Absolutely. And to go along with, you know, the sugar and kind of being in this perpetual cycle, mm. it also can create an unhealthy lifestyle that tends to perpetuate. So starting at the top with like unhealthy foods. So that could be your processed foods, again, that have a lot of hidden sugars on top of other things that are yes. just not healthy. And then your unhealthy drinks. So yes. someone who, you know, decides, oh, I'm going to get a diet Coke you're still getting something that's not healthy and probably still contains a lot of the same amount of sugar. And then kind of 
you know, then you have that sugar low and you feel like you really don't want to do much. So then you are more passive in your activity. Yes. And then you see the negative changes in your body and that affects your mood and mm-hmm. your um, your vision of yourself and how you feel about yourself. And it becomes a vicious cycle. And I mm-hmm. like the, um, the title of this one as far as unhealthy lifestyle because it is long-term lifestyle changes yes. that we want to help so you make. So true. This is not yeah. about diet. No, it's about a lifestyle. Absolutely. And a whole lifestyle. Yes. Because there are other areas of your life that you'll have to look at as well. Because mm-hmm. if it's emotional eating, stress eating, that's bringing you to mm-hmm. all the sugary foods, then those are topics that really need to be looked at to yeah. help you succeed. And in fact, our first webinar was on that very topic. So you can always go back and check that out. Um, But unhealthy lifestyle also leads to weight gain. Yes. So we wanted to show you a visual. And I'm going to just put up the studio because we need lots of room for this one. This is 10 pounds of fat. (laughs) So five or ten pounds, not so bad. If somebody feels like that. This is what it looks like. Yes, ten pounds of fat. It's heavy, and it is very heavy. Just to feel it was yeah. very heavy. It's really heavy. And again, another visual because I think sometimes we think five or ten pounds, not that bad. But this is what it looks like, and it's yes. affecting our whole overall health. Yes. So of course, um, it's health first. Um, and healthy yes. living, healthy lifestyle, happiness Absolutely. first. And it's not, I don't want people to focus all about their weight. However, okay. the benefits of choosing better foods mm-hmm. result in this weight coming off without having to try so hard. Because when you're eating whole foods, mm-hmm. then you're not having to focus so much on losing weight. It'll happen naturally. And I've also heard so many people say, you know what? I cut soda out of my diet and I lost 20 pounds. Yes. Um, even there can be simple with, changes. Um, coffee, taking just the sugar out of their yes. coffee, um, and seeing a difference. There are Absolutely. many. We're going to give you so much information today, but we're also going to cap like some of just the simple, important things that you can do mm-hmm. to start. Um, because there is Absolutely. a lot of information, and we don't want it to be overwhelming. Right. But you can choose, you know, choose one or two or three of mm-hmm. the things that we're recommending to you, and start there. Yes. And find it's what resonates yes. for you. Find what feels find good. what resonates for you um, as we're talking, and you know, take something that you feel like, wow, that really impacts me, or wow, I never knew that, or I had no idea, and start seeing how you can modify your life. Yes, with simple changes that are about a healthy lifestyle. Which we're going to talk about foods to mm-hmm. take off the table. Mm-hmm. We're going to talk about the foods that you should be having. So next to, and we're just going to highlight a couple things on this chart because um, there were a couple things that I thought were, were kind of important. Uh, this is just very a, a very chart regarding obesity. And the one thing that really stood out for me was that 30% of the world population is overweight. And even though you can't see it very well on the slide, um, the number one out of the top 10 countries that are overweight, the number one country was the United States for yeah, people that are overweight. Sad. And then you really liked. Oh, I love the comparison of the portion sizes. Uh, In 20 years, the size of a donut, a a burger, fries, sodas, I feel like it's a a visual of the size of people. (laughs) Yeah, you said that. You said in 20 years, people have grown. Because as they've been increasing their portion sizes, their yes. bodies have been increasing and their health concerns have been increasing. Absolutely. And that's just a couple of things that, yeah. you know, we're going to touch on too. It's so important. And especially when you look at the sodas, a lot of places now don't even, you know, this is your small. Yeah. Look at the places that, you know, do mega everything sizes. Bigger. bigger is not always better. No, not at all. So how sugar affects our body is real. So how sugar promotes obesity. And this is a similar, kind of similar talk as the other one about the perpetual cycle of sugar addiction. But this just shows how it also promotes weight gain and obesity. Right. In our bodies, when you're overloaded with excess carbs and excess sugars, and it has nowhere else to go, it turns to fat. Right. And it turns to fat very quickly. Um, Carbs turns right into sugar 
which turns into that, <laughs> which is not very pretty. <laughs> which leads to health issues too. It's not only about the um, aesthetics of it, but the health, right. the health right. issues. So definitely first health issue that I think we can all relate to in terms of knowledge to know about is diabetes. I think almost everyone knows of someone, someone. who they can identify who has diabetes. Yes. And we just wanted to highlight the three types, um, type one diabetes, type two, and the third is uh, digestion. Gestational diabetes. Thank you. Um, so certainly type one is when you when it's characterized by a lack of insulin production. So when your body actually is not producing insulin correctly. And this could be something um, that, you know, could definitely start in childhood or could be anywhere during a lifespan. It also is something that could be hereditary. Excess uh, type two diabetes is 90% of the diabetes in the world. And this tends to be with caused by excessive sugar yes. and unhealthy foods. Yes, and it's starting earlier and earlier. It is. I think at one point it might have even have been called adult onset diabetes and right. then um, yes. was changed because it's yes. starting so much sooner. Yes, and there are, you know, nowadays so many children that, you know, are eating the Pop-Tarts or having the, yes. the snacks and the maybe 10 cookies and and you can imagine all the sugar that's happening. And there are some kids who are so finicky with their foods that all they want is the brown and the white and the carbs. And unfortunately, that all changes to sugar. So, Which means we just have to work a little harder to yeah. find creative ways to mm -hmm. get better things in there. And yeah. not just for children. Um, but as far as yeah. at school, I'm thinking about. and But it's people through their work day as well because the stresses and pressures and time constraints uh, can lead us mm -hmm. to those vending machines. Or and that's actually one um, one thing that I did read too on one of the studies was that one of the healthy pieces for helping to kind of kick the sugar addiction was out of sight, out of mind. And that was getting rid of the vending machines was really important in yes. terms of businesses and schools. Or filling them with healthier foods, yep. healthier which options. some places are starting to do now, yes. which is great. Yes. And then to go along with diabetes, I think a lot of us are also familiar with some of the complications. Really serious. And some a little more that maybe we didn't, we weren't aware of. But, you know, we just wanted to highlight that, again, sugar, excessive sugar or even sugar addiction um, has the potential of creating significant medical concerns. So diabetes and the complications. And unfortunately for, um, like, you know, especially a type 1 diabetes, but for a lot of people with type 2, um, sometimes insulin injections are required. Yeah, so that doesn't look... It doesn't sound like a nice lifestyle. No, but um, I, we also thought this was pretty interesting. Yes, these are two really huge things because they're a really big deal. Yeah. And um, you can help yourself with what you're consuming. So that's why we really wanted to highlight them. Mm -hmm. And the gut-to-brain connection and dementia yes. um, is huge. So you're when you're having extremely high um, levels of sugar in your blood, it is connected to the onset of dementia. Yes. Um, and nobody wants that for themselves. So we have to right. start thinking about it now. Or, or so a loved we, one. Yes. So yes. we put um, also the link for this particular study because it's definitely, I think, one of the, um, you know, one of the most recent studies done at Harvard um, in terms of being able to show a connection between sugar and dementia. Yes. Which yeah. I think is pretty amazing. Clean foods, clear minds. Yeah, absolutely. So are you ready to kick your sugar addiction? Because we're ready to talk about that piece yes. now. You know, we felt like we definitely needed to, you know, highlight what are the concerns of sugar. And now we're ready to highlight how to kick your sugar addiction. Yes. Now that you're motivated. Yes. So the flip side, the benefits of not having so much in your system um, you're going to have more energy to exercise. You're going to feel more motivated to eat healthier foods. You are going to be focusing on yourself and learning to listen to your body. 
mm-hmm. so that you are even open to things like meditation and having mantras for yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, moving your body every day yeah. is amazing for you, your mind, body, and soul. And I do really believe it does start with the foods that we're eating. Like I said, clean yes. foods, clear, um, clear head. head, clear minds. Yeah, so important. So the flip side is you get through the initial detox of sugar, which is a real thing, and there can be some side effects. Um, you know, a little more fatigue, headaches, headaches. moodiness. Mm-hmm. Um, those withdrawal, they're proper withdrawal symptoms, as we mm-hmm. saw. It's a proper mm-hmm. addiction. So getting through those, um, meditation and mantras are huge for that. And having a support system is huge. Mm-hmm. Um, so you get to the other side, and what you have waiting for you is a much happier life and lifestyle Mm -hmm. with clearer thinking, more energy, and just a whole, an all over better quality of life. Absolutely. And I just, I thought this slide was nice. The benefits of meditation, because there are so many benefits for meditation. So not only kind of uh, bringing uh, connectiveness between your mind, spirit, and body, but also being able to, um, you know, reduce stress. And especially in, in depression, because especially when we look at that, those tend to be two factors where people will gravitate towards sweets and sugary things and carbs. Also, I'm um, just creating more mental balance, which helps you to make better choices in your food and creating a healthier lifestyle. Definitely. Well, even taking the minute mm-hmm. to meditate, you're focusing on your breathing, and you're giving your body more oxygen. You know, how many times do we walk around and think, oh, when's the last time I took in a full proper breath? Because mm-hmm. I've been so busy doing this or that. Absolutely. So meditation can be something that people need to ease into and find what works for them, find what feels good. Mm-hmm. But sometimes it's even as simple as just sitting down and taking three breaths. And that's how it starts. Um, and if that's all you have to time to do is to take three breaths then you take three breaths you're still going to make a different decision than you would have before right and it just gives you that moment to stop and think which I what I which I love about deep breathing and meditation is it gives you that moment to stop and think and to also implement more positive inner self-talk so that you're able to um, create a better thought process and and that that goes into our mantra Yes. So with taking that moment to stop and think, you're also creating a kind of a, a place for you to be able to stop and even think differently. So the mantra that, you know, we thought was really important was I am more than a mindless eater. Especially and specifically for this talk and with sugar. Mm-hmm. Um And I think sometimes, just to touch on the fact that sometimes when people, like, coming in listening to this, it's about busting your sugar addiction, um, they think we're only going to talk about food. And this is a really important component that can help you through all of it. Taking the time to breathe, meditate, have mantras for yourself. I have, like, a list of them. And sometimes I'll even write it down and I'll put it, everybody has tough days and who mm-hmm. couldn't use a little help to get through the day you know whether you you put it on the bottom of your computer screen mm-hmm. or you pack it in your lunch or a loved one's lunch you know just mm-hmm. to help um boost yourself boost other people right. so that it's on your mind and before you have to make any big decision whether it's food a decision at work a decision for your family taking that breath and thinking of your mantra you know for mm-hmm. food in this situation i am more than a mindless eater do I really want to eat this? Do I need to eat this? Am I hungry? Yes. Or am I just upset, angry, tired, bored? All of those things. The minute you take a minute, you say the mantra again, I guarantee you're going to make a better choice. Right. And I also like these little almost post-it note, positive little comments to yourself where you could even use any of those when needed as a mantra and just put the word I can in front of it so I can slow down I can keep calm I can breathe Yes. you know I think that anything that you can say starting with the word I to kind of bring that ownership makes it really personal absolutely and you know I think also just allow that statement to kind of be you know like what you want to do with how your next step is going to be 
And you know? I will even say sometimes some days are tough. Some situations are tough. And you can even acknowledge that it's tough. <laughs> this is a tough moment. I really want that brownie. I really mm-hmm. want that chocolate cake. And I, yeah. this is a tough moment for me. But mm-hmm. I am more than a mindless eater. And I'm going to take a breath. And maybe I will have one bite of it and I'm not having the rest. Maybe I'm not going to have any of it. Because it will always be there. That's what I think we yeah. forget, too. That it's, oh, it could always be there. You can make a different choice right. a different day. Right. But um, you can acknowledge that you're having a tough moment. And then you get to the other side of it. It's mm-hmm. flip side. Mm -hmm. And I know something that I've used in the past, which has just been helpful for me as far as helping to monitor and moderate sugar intake is I would, for instance, if I know that I have a party or a birthday party or something that I I have to look forward to and I know that there's going to be awesome desserts, I will make that my day to have something because I know that there are going to be things and, and I don't want to live without enjoying things. So, but I know maybe during the week I'm going to make healthier choices. So I know come that day I can have that piece of cake or that brownie or whatever. Oh, and the upside of that is mm-hmm. that if you have been eating healthier, you're actually going to enjoy it more mm-hmm. and you'll want less because it's going to taste gonna say better. That. It's going to be, yeah. it, it, it's You'll enjoy the bites you have, but not need the whole thing to try to get that whole high you're looking for. Right, that, that dopamine, really only comes that, in that dopamine release, as exactly. shown in the scan, is that's why someone with kind of that normal, as they call it, the normal brain scan, yes. who um, doesn't eat sugar constantly, um, can enjoy something and get that kind of immediate pleasure reward yes. feeling from it. I love when my great. clients come to me and they say, do you know, I was really worried about going to whatever party it was mm-hmm. and I didn't actually want it. Mm-hmm. I was happy and they were surprised because the mental process of it all, they thought they were going to feel exactly how they used to feel, but they'd been mm-hmm. eating clean for long enough that they didn't crave it. They didn't want it. And that was amazing. It was amazing for them. It was amazing for me to hear it. And it's true. It happens. And I hear it from a lot of clients. Absolutely. So there is a flip side. Yep. So love what you eat and eat for health. Yeah. Food should be enjoyable. And beautiful yes. whole foods mm-hmm. are enjoyable. Which and is delicious. To, and yes. So delicious. And sweet. And mm-hmm. um. When you are out of the sugary haze, you can really, t- you know, your taste buds really come back to life as well. Yes. So you can enjoy whole foods. And there are some really, you know, eat the rainbow. It really is a beautiful thing to do. And your body reaps the benefits. I just think it's incredible. And I think that you just said something that made me um, think about, again, an- another video that I had watched regarding this and with the brain receptors is they highlighted that the moment your food touches your tongue, those tongue receptors go right to your brain. I love it. So I think that that's really cool, yeah. too, is it starts with the moment something enters your mouth. It immediately goes right to the brain. So you can get that same effect from wonderful fruits and vegetables. And I think, you know, the beautiful colors and everything is just that's natural and side. whole. And, you know, for people that are um, really struggling and you really need to incorporate more fruits and vegetables into your lives, sometimes a fun challenge is to try a new color each week Mm -hmm. and have a plate for your family. Say it's orange day and you have some oranges, some cantaloupe, carrots, maybe some mango, um, and everybody has to try a few bites. And then you change the color and you move on to some greens and you've got some cucumber, you know, even throw yeah. some lime wedges in there. Because there's, that's, you know, you wouldn't want to just eat one, but you get to all play and talk with, about the flavors. Um, I love that. Yeah. I love that. Like, even if Berries, you do it once kiwi, a week. Yeah, once a week and go each, through the rainbow. Yeah, and each day maybe, or each couple of days, you could add another fruit or vegetable that's the same color. Yeah, and, and so you have has a week to try. of trying. And a few that's bites. All. Because sometimes you take that first bite and you're mentally resistant to it. So you need to take a few bites. So. And I think that's a great way to also try to pull children into trying new things yes. and trying to um, bring healthier food into the house that they would potentially eat mm-hmm. is make it like a game about we're going to eat the rainbow yes. and see how they do. And just know that they just need to have a couple bites and at least they're trying it. Mm. And it's bonding. Awesome. It's family bonding. Or it if is. you have 
friends that are also needing to be on the same path, you could get together with them and have the same kind of thing, whether it's friends, family. Food is a very bonding experience. Absolutely. It's, it's ritualistic and it beautiful, is. and we're actually taking the time to chew and enjoy it. It's really beautiful. Awesome. So that's a fun thing to do. I yeah. love that idea. And then this is, again, eating the rainbow and how different foods... I actually want to slow, show just this slide, um, how eating different foods in different colors, how it benefits our body in different ways. Yes, because they all have different properties. You know, eating a variety of foods, um, a variety of whole foods is really going to round out and balance your health without having to specifically worry about one component or one, because if you're eating a whole diverse variety of these beautiful fruits and vegetables, you're going to be getting enough fiber and you're going to be getting protein and you're getting natural sugars that we you know, need in our body too, but without all of the excess. And we're gonna be getting the healthy omega-3 fatty acids. Um, and it's important. Absolutely. And this this is a really helpful and handy guide. So we wanted to, we have a couple other foods that we can demonstrate as far as serving sizes. And so this particular um, chart is about serving sizes to give you ideas about just using your hands, what, you know, certainly the equivalent would be for certain foods. Yeah, because portion size, you know, if you're eating fruits and vegetables, I feel like you don't need to worry about the portion size. Not a lot of people mm -hmm. in the 7 to 13 servings of fruits and vegetables that our body needs to get a day, there's not a lot of people that are going to have to worry about having too much of that. Mm -hmm. So, but when you're looking at um, meats, grains, legumes, nuts, um, you can also overdo it or the... Um, oils, mayonnaise, sugar, those, those um, like the dressings and things that we can be adding onto a very healthy salad that can take it down to a, a non-healthy place. Absolutely. So that's a really good visual for that yeah. as well. And we wanted to show a couple things that, you know, people have so often in their, their you know, diet. Their lives, yeah. Well, fruit juice is a big one because mm -hmm. people think, well, it's fruit. So... Right. It's not bad for me, and it's not horrible, but within reason. Right. This is a serving size of apple juice. Um, there's not a lot of people I know that would stop at having just this amount. Right. Um, and you're not getting the other benefits of the fruit, such as the fiber, that is going to help you balance right. your um, blood sugar. Right. So I really do think there's something in saying if you're going to have fruit to eat it instead of drinking it. And if you mm -hmm. are going to drink it because everybody wants to have a little fun and so it's around, it still tastes good, look at the portion side. And the size. nutrition label. Uh, yeah, read the Specifically label. Specifically for the amount of sugar that's in it yeah. too. Um, even things like yogurt, which we're touching on at a yeah. point too. We'll get yeah. to that afterwards. But um, things that we consider healthy that in too, in too big of portions, they're, they're just not going to be beneficial. So. And this one, whenever um, we showed people, they always go, oh, my gosh. <laughs> I said this I is, yeah, me too. So this is one serving size of ice cream. I don't know so many people that would have This is one only serving size amount. of chocolate ice cream. So this is considered, I think, um, a half a half cup. cup is considered a serving size of chocolate ice cream. And so, I don't really see many people yeah. having this much ice cream in their <laughs> bowl and it's thinking like three or like, four of those. Yeah. And thinking, oh, that that's all I should be eating. Yeah. So also kind of pay attention to that um, in terms of the sugars and the consumption of how much you are eating. Yeah. So that if you are having it, you're paying attention to the amount of it. Because mm -hmm. I know Sometimes people can then say, well, I've been so good for so long, I may as well dive into a tub of it. Right. Um, it just doesn't work that way. You have to be right. consistent. Consistency is everything so that Absolutely. you can enjoy it when you, when you are going to have it. Absolutely. And your body can recover so much more quickly because that's another thing. I think a lot of my clients say to me that um, after they've been clean eating for so long, mm -hmm. that when they do go to a party, a gathering, a get-together, and they do have a little bit more, they splurge a little, they have more um, sugary foods, it is a lot quicker that their body responds because they go right back to their regular way of eating. They have fun for the day, that, but they know how it feels because you can get right. that sort of sugary hangover. Absolutely. And um, they know how to get out of it because it's in, been ingrained into their lifestyle. 
then we also like this 10 foods to help reduce stress. Different foods have different qualities that can help us along with the different nutrients. So everything that our body needs and our brain needs and you know, antioxidants are huge for helping to balance your stress level. I'm even gonna say, venture to say that taking the time out of your busy, stressful day mm -hmm. to take a breath and then eat something healthy is gonna alter where your stress level is. I if think it's stop to yeah, eat it and absolutely. enjoy it and then jump back in. Um, but it's making it a priority because food is also not a priority in our day. It ends up being something we're shoveling in just to just right. to get some food in. Right. Um and that's not helping the stress. So it's kind of reprioritizing so that you can make better choices nutritionally and help your stress level. And I would also say that, um, say if you have uh, stress at work, which a lot of people have kind of commented to me that that's something that they really want to um, work on is work stress. I think at least one thing you can do to help the inside of your body and also be able to begin to help mentally is maybe look at some of these foods that help reduce stress and which ones can you bring for lunch which ones can you bring for snacks mm. and have on hand because being prepared is huge mm -hmm. especially if you are actively you have made the commitment that you are going to break the chains with sugar and you need to be prepared you can't just go out into the world on because then you'll fall back into old habits it's making new habits and new healthy patterns that are going to be sustainable. Um, did we touch on yet the foods to take off the table? No. Okay. Nope. We're getting there. Yep, we're getting there. So <laughs> coming out of the sugary haze, which is that detox, that kind of sugar withdrawal, which you said could result at first in headaches and just feeling mm -hmm. tired. Um, but here's, you know, part of the flip side is how you feel when you don't have the sugar taking over mm -hmm. inside your body and wreaking havoc. Yes, more focus and clarity, my favorites, um, because that's huge for how we face everything in our lives. Yes. Um, and with more focus and clarity, I think comes more inner calmness. Because yes, absolutely. And you're able to enjoy the enjoyable things so much more. And I will say also with the clarity and the inner calmness, you are able to handle stressful situations in a better way. Yeah. You are able to stop and think about what choices you have instead of becoming emotionally reactive. Yeah. So I think that that's where that piece is so um, important and valuable. Um, so also increasing your energy, but also uh, better skin. And definitely I think drinking more water to yes. and clearing the toxins. Clean foods. Clear. I have, again, another thing all my clients say, mm -hmm. my skin is so much better. Actually, I had yeah. a client the other day who went for a facial with her regular esthetician. Yeah. And her, um, the woman giving her facial said, what have you been doing? Your skin looks amazing. Awesome. So she thought it was a product line and um, it wasn't. It was whole it foods was and water. Whole foods and water and exercise. Yeah. yeah. And better sleep. Better sleep is so important. Mm -hmm. And you can do it. Your body does it naturally when you're getting all those rhythms in order. Mm -hmm. And to go along, we're starting to balance inside of our body, which is also helping to stabilize our moods. So decreasing that lethargic kind of feeling, maybe uh, improving some of that kind of, like you said, the sugary blues. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so that you're feeling a little more upbeat and just feeling a little bit more at a constant level yes, yes. of being able to function more well and being yeah. more balanced. And then when you your moods are stabilized, you naturally have a more positive outlook, Absolutely. which I think can affect all areas of your life, even Absolutely. how you end up greeting people and how they respond to you. Mm -hmm. Or if someone's not responding or, or yeah. greeting you well, you respond better to them, and that can change your whole day, your whole life. Mm -hmm. um, and with a positive, more positive outlook, consuming better foods, having more energy, your overall health is yeah. better and wellness. And even if someone was in a risk factor for diabetes yes, or a risk factor for dementia, because maybe it's in your family, and we know that there's a hereditary component, is making food changes and making some lifestyle changes can take you out of that out of that um, category, yes, which is really amazing and amazingly important. That you have the control mm -hmm. to help yourself 
which is incredible. There's not, um, there's, there are not many negative things that could come out of adding whole more whole foods into your diet and exercise or just moving your body yes. and drinking more water. Yes. So Good again, we have the potential for decreasing risk for future health con conditions, including obesity um, and you know anything else that comes with it. Heart issues, heart attacks, you know, strokes, all kinds of all kinds of issues. So there's so many amazing things with coming out of the sugary haze yeah. and trying to live a more healthier lifestyle. It's exciting. I literally get excited about it. I know. <laughs> because it's a change that everybody can make. Absolutely. Um, and just to touch upon, because sometimes I will get people asking me about the expense of eating healthy foods. And junk food can be very expensive, especially mm -hmm. the quantities that it's purchased in. So I think people just need to really look at um, mm -hmm. what they're buying and where their money's going, because that can be done as well. Yeah, it's another webinar. Yes. <laughs> now, here is the off-the-table foods. All soda, no soda. So these are foods that have no nutritional benefit Whatsoever. to you or to your body at all. Yeah, sodas, regular or diet, just you, you have to find a way to take them out of your lives to really help yourself, whether it's mm -hmm. weaning down or going cold turkey, finding something else that works. And I will tell Water. you... A good way to kind of get rid of this is, say, if you like the carbonation, um, seltzer. Yes. is a great way to introduce something else that maybe you like the effect of the carbonation of soda. Mm -hmm. um, go to seltzer, and there's, you know, there's a variety of flavors, or you can get the plain, and you can, you know, do it with your own fresh fruit. Yes, exactly. And I'm not saying that... Um, it's going to be instantly easy, but it's something you have to focus on, work on, right. and you can find other things that you like. Over time, you won't be craving it as much, uh, yeah. and you'll enjoy the seltzer water, the regular water, the mm -hmm. fruit-infused water, right. the cucumber and watermelon-infused water. Like They're really delicious they combinations. Are. And they're so refreshing. Um, yeah, and what is going to help get you through is once you realize how much better you feel, mm -hmm. that is what's going to end up carrying you through. So I know in the beginning it can be a little tough, but sodas... Um, the next thing, artificial sweeteners. First of all, it starts with the word artificial. Mm, which means <laughs> we don't want to put anything artificial <laughs> in our bodies. Right. So our body does not know how to process it, and it will immediately store it as fat. Yes, and because our body cannot break it down, yeah. so you are getting no benefit, no benefit from it whatsoever. Um, and you have to read labels because there are sweeteners hidden in places. So and we'll talk about that, but yes. high fructose corn syrup, I think a lot of us have heard that term in the past year or so. Mm -hmm. And now you will see commercials where companies are saying we no longer have high fructose corn syrup in our products, yes. which sounds really great. But please note on the bottom, yes, is we have included a link that shows that a lot of main corporations have renamed high fructose corn syrup. Yes. Still adding it um, they've changed the percentage of it, but still adding it and trying to hide it. So we wanted to make you aware that if you're conscious like we are about what you put into your body um, and the body, you know, and, and what your loved ones eat, just check that out because yeah. it's very, I think, disheartening. Yes, but we have to take responsibility to be aware. And we have like to this. be knowledgeable. Like being on, you Absolutely. know, like and this is why we're doing this it. is yeah. to help provide knowledge for the things that we know in the way we live yes. and to help others. And I just think that that's a really important, um, you know, website to check, just check out. Absolutely. Because we, um, knowledge is power. And mm -hmm. we just want to share because we, through our lives, we've had reasons, challenges. We've, mm -hmm. we've really studied these things and yes. it's been so beneficial that we really want to share it. Yeah. Um, the next one on the list is any word that you cannot pronounce that you do not know what it means or it's something that you would not have found in your grandmother's or your great-grandmother's pantry, just don't consume it. Um, it's so easy to just find a food, it's in a box, and grab it. But right. when you look at what's in there, um, you just take it off the table. If you right. take these four things off the table, you are going to see a difference. Right. Um, even, you know, because like I said earlier, there are a lot of things we're throwing at you. So when you just are going to choose the things that you take away from it for now mm -hmm. and then come back and mm -hmm. take some more out of it, um, taking these four things off the table, right. literally, Absolutely. figuratively, 
yeah. it's going to make a huge difference. Absolutely. And with number four, like creating foods that your grandmother would eat, that is going to translate more to making foods yourself. Yes. Because, right, because a lot of processed foods will include things that you have no idea what they are and things that would never be found in your great grandmother's kitchen. So that kind of promotes needing to cook more at home. Yeah. And you have control over the ingredients that you're using. Yes. And I do think there's a little something to your love going into the food that you're making. I do and share as by a that. Family. Yeah. It's because bonding. I think you do that with your children and I do that with my son and we'll make homemade things and it's a nice family bonding time too. Yeah. I do think things taste better and I even think of my childhood. My mother baked everything and mm-hmm. we would help and I remember I certainly wanted to do it with my children because I have such fond memories of doing nice. that with my mother and my brothers and sisters and you know what's in there and there you're not ever grabbing high fructose corn syrup out of the cupboard or monosodium glutamate out of the cupboard like you're not grabbing the things that you can't (laughs) pronounce right so that takes that makes it easier it takes um the guesswork out of the equation when you've made it yourself absolutely i think that's a great question would this be my great grandmother's kitchen yeah and if the answer is no then you put it back yes makes it very simple yeah so, I thought this was very interesting, too. Sugar has 61 different names. Do you know that? Yeah. No. Do you know no. I knew a lot of them? No. I honestly didn't know it was 61. Like, there right. are some of these, and I'm like, oh, yeah. So, we, again, sh- wanted to share with you the link of the 61 different names. I did put them here on the bottom. I will show you the slide so you can see it a little bit clearer. But those are 61 different names for sugar. So anytime you have um, a product, you may see some of those particular names of sugar in the ingredients. Um, and some some of these sugars are, are sugars that would be better options. They're all on the list. You know, agave nectar, it might be a date, um, you know, using natural dates. Syrup is, um, that you have to really check with because like maple syrup is on the list but then there's also syrup underneath it too Mm -hmm. because there's other pancake sorts of syrup where you if you are going to choose a natural sweetener you want to make sure it is a natural sweetener and that it's pure maple syrup or honey um and not any of the other ones really Mm -hmm. you know so you have to just really read those labels and hidden sugars oh yes it's so baby formula yes who would want to give their baby you know but we just don't know and people so this and, is why and this we is want again people to be aware. and this is again what we said earlier in terms of um companies marketing yes adding sugars to foods to get people addicted, addicted. and i again it's to me it's disheartening that they'll start as young as babies so if you have um, baby formula in your house and it is not um, particularly organic, um, yeah. check out the ingredients and see if you see some sort of sugar that was listed in those yes. 61 different names of sugar because that most likely is in that baby formula. And, you know, we certainly, we're already, if we don't know that, unintentionally, we're yes. starting our children off on the wrong feet when they're infants. And that's what is so bothersome to yeah. me. Well, and you know, we, oftentimes too, we'll think about what's going into a child's body and we think, oh, we'd never put that into a child's body. But then you have to also say, why would I put it into my own body if I wouldn't put it into mm-hmm. my child's body? We have to kind mm-hmm. of get the perception of everything and care mm-hmm. of everybody mm-hmm. on target. Sure. Um, breads is another place that you think I'm just buying a loaf of bread and it says it's whole wheat and it says it's whole grain and it says it's multi-grain and it's mm-hmm. got everything wonderful in it. But check, because a lot of times there are sugars. And a lot breads. of them for so long and, and probably still still a lot of them still have high fructose corn syrup in them yes as one that's of the huge first in bread. Yes. ingredients oh yeah and uh, with sugars and labels if it's in the top three ingredients just put it back <laughs> um salad dressings the yep. same thing we see um a lot of sugar being put in salad dressings and pasta sauces so um i actually look for and buy pasta sauces that say no added sugar right you have to just read all of the label the the nutrition label the front of the label whether Mm -hmm. there's just there's information on there we've just got to find it Mm -hmm. um because a lot of times there they will say it's or it could be organic and still have some other stuff in it that Mm -hmm. you Mm -hmm. might not want in it so even with organic which i do i do um I am pro-organic, 
buying, but um, you still need yeah. to read the labels. Yeah. Um, and yogurts. Yogurt is yeah. huge because it is touted as a health food, and it has many healthy um, attributes to it, whether it's the calcium, right. it's the probiotics, right. um, protein, um, and yogurt can be good for you, but there are so many yogurts out there that have added sugars that are a lot. I think this label is, is it 26 grams? On I'm actually of, going to um, just show the labels. Yeah, 29 grams of sugar in the label on the top label on the right, mm -hmm. uh, 24 on the label on the bottom. And on the left was, um, we're leaving out any names of uh, brands here, but on a pure yogurt label, only nine grams of sugar compared also to look 29. look at the ingredients. Yes. Look at the ingredients. It's yes. It's so different. You know, on the top one, on the right, I see sugar, fructose. Yes. Yeah, so there, yeah, you've got. And I see several sugar ingredients. Not to mention th words we don't really know what they are. Right. And the same thing with the bottom. I see sugar. Then I see fructose syrup. And then I see high fructose corn syrup. So one of the it's first of five, at least one of the first of five ingredients has three different sugars in it. Yeah. And that's all on something. Yogurt. Oh, it's healthy for you. It says it's going to help my digestion. Um, you have to read the labels. Absolutely. So I think that's pretty significant. So when you're going yeah. to the store, you might need to take a little bit extra time. I mean, if anybody sees me in the store, I flip food over and I look at the labels. Yes, absolutely. That's uh, it can be fun to compare to and a great opportunity to talk to your children, your friends. If you've got mm -hmm. a support group that you're trying to do mm -hmm. this with, go to the grocery store together and read yep. the labels together. Um, it does make it it's fun. It's interesting. It's a good topic of conversation. Yes, absolutely. And so kind of switching to something else that someone can do to try to help themselves is, is a question of how do I monitor my eating habits mm -hmm. and food journaling. Yeah, food and journaling. And you were going to talk a little bit about food journaling because that's something you still do. do I still life. food journal. Yes. Um, it really helped me. Uh, it helped me see exactly what I was eating. And I would mm -hmm. even write down how I was feeling when I was eating it, how I felt after I was eating it. And it didn't start out that way. It started out simple. I just wrote down what I ate for the day. And mm -hmm. then I realized where there were some gaps and why I wasn't feeling as well as I, as I could. Mm -hmm. I have my um, health coaching clients food journal, mm -hmm. all of them. Um, there's, I've met, I've had clients that have met resistance in the beginning. There's not one that didn't say they're glad they did it afterwards. Right. Um, no one said, I wish I, I never wish I had did never that. done that. <laughs> uh, you take the time, you write it down. I, whether you keep your journal on you and you write it during the day, you write it down at the end of the day, whatever mm -hmm. works for you, yep. but you write it down. If you can write down how you're feeling, that's even better. You can see where you can help yourself. You can also celebrate your successes. You write down if you have exercised. There are even apps mm -hmm. for it. Um, there are apps for food journaling as well. I personally like the longhand written version. There's something kind of therapeutic in that in itself. Mm -hmm. But you can see where you can make improvements and you can celebrate your success. Mm -hmm. I think it's a really beautiful visual of yourself. It's a... Um, self-accountability system it's yes. a self-support system and it's it's really pro proven successful for myself for friends um and for my clients yeah and maybe just some categories that you might want to put in food journaling is the food that you ate how much water you had mm, yes your exercise for the day and how you felt Yes. So there are just four distinct categories that you could use to create your uh, food journal. And um, I think if you wanted to go one step further, you could, and that is what food group does the food belong into? Um, is it a carb? Is it a protein? Um, is it a dairy? Because also you want to make sure that you are having what you need. So if you're looking to decrease your carbs and you saw, wow, I ate five carbs today, maybe that will help you to see that tomorrow I need to significantly cut back, so I'm going to add more vegetables. And you can make it a goal-oriented mm -hmm. system, too. Like mm -hmm. I would like to get yeah. 
in between, I want 10 to 13 servings of fruits and vegetables today. So it's lunchtime and you see how many of those servings you've had when it comes to snack time, yeah. you're goal oriented. And instead of having some other form of snack, maybe I'll just have some raw veggies or some fruit. Mm -hmm. So it's a Absolutely. really good way. I think I like for people to focus on adding in the good stuff even before thinking of taking stuff away from themselves. So yes. just add in, add in the rainbow and mm -hmm. you're gonna be thriving. So now on the table foods, things okay. that, you know, we definitely feel like, yes, bring onto the table when you're yes. talking about adding foods. Literally and figuratively. So <laughs> fruits and vegetables, um, when you're you're battling with sugar, add sweet root vegetables into your diet. Some roasted sweet um, root vegetables are delicious and they can satisfy a nut with their natural sugars. They can help satisfy that craving. And your your um, taste buds get, can get stimulated again by natural sugars. Yeah. Um, and they're very colorful. They're like, so colorful. It's also enticing visually. Yes. When you see, like, you know, the the yellows and oranges. Yes, beetroot and, and the sweet reds. And so good. It looks really good. Um, which we'll have a recipe for you as well to help you on that path. But um, sweet fruits and root vegetables, I encourage people to have them when they're battling with getting away from processed foods and refined sugars because it'll help you along the path. Mm -hmm. um, whole grains and whole foods, yes. the closer to nature, the better. So mm -hmm. we want things, you know, if you can mm -hmm. pick it and eat it, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. And adding smoothies into your morning routine can help satisfy yes. your sweet tooth while getting some benefits of nutritious leafy greens and I think also fiber because you're yes. adding um, maybe some vegetables, uh, maybe some carrots, some fruit, maybe some apples, and then also getting you know some of the other health benefits such as antioxidants when you add blueberries yes. and yes and you're getting a beautiful. diverse when you're blending it into a smoothie uh, you're getting you can add in a diverse group of greens mm -hmm. you know in a green smoothie I'll add uh, a spinach and kale blend with some zucchini and some cucumber, mm -hmm. um, which don't, you know, zucchini and cucumber, you're getting the health benefits, but they don't have very strong flavors. So they're easily right. hidden by the fruits that you do put in. And it tastes delicious. Great for um, mm -hmm. whether it's children that are not wanting to get in those fruits and vegetables or loved ones too. Yeah, um, yeah smoothies are an incredible way to start the day. And I think they're also an awesome snack too oh yeah so for instance it could be you know like a, a mid-afternoon after school mm -hmm. snack to be able with your child to like say okay what do you want and let's throw it in the blender and let's do it up and then you guys can like cheers to you yes. know having this yummy smoothie together before yes. dinner yeah and it's sweet and delicious so it's a way to get in those what 13 7 to 13 7 to 13 fruits, 13 and, vegetables. fruits and vegetables you can get quite a few in with smoothies. Yeah, which in is a nice. delicious way. Yeah, yum. So here's the here recipe. is you. <laughs> They're here is me. <laughs> and the recipe. This is a link to my sweet, simple, delicious page. It's sweetsimpledelicious.com. And if you go onto the blog section, it um, has a whole list of recipes. And I do have a lot of smoothie recipes. I am a firm and true believer in smoothies because they honestly mm. changed my life for the better. I feel like everybody should have smoothies. You find the one that feels good. You find the ones you like. Um, mm. I have some favorites that I just use again and again. And then other times I want to um, get more creative and diverse. So there's mm. some really good recipes on there to help you on your way. This particular link is on um, three smoothies that I find quite delicious. And my, my, my taste testers have found them delicious as well. And they also are, are filled with foods that have detoxifying qualities for your system. So good skin. Nice. Good vibes. Excellent. Cool. And here's the recipe for the uh, link to the sweet root vegetable recipe mm -hmm. uh, to help you on your way. Awesome. And it looks delicious. This yeah. one, I'm talking about it being appetizing because it's visually, it looks yes. good. And I, yeah. you added some Brussels sprouts too. So you can like throw in different things to bring different colors and kind of add the rainbow. And when you look at this versus a, a frozen meal, you know, whether it's, mm -hmm. um, you know, one of those prepackaged healthy meals that have things added so that they can be frozen and they're off, mm -hmm. often very high in sodium or there are, or and or there are hidden sugars. Um, when you look at that versus looking at this, um, uh, just a quick example, I had made some salsa last week mm -hmm. and um, 
someone was eating it. And they were like, where did you get this? It's so fresh mm. like, from my kitchen. That's right. <laughs> it's like, it yeah, because I chopped it up. And it just, even that, um, it makes a difference. Mm-hmm. Um, and the more fresh and beautiful they are, the more enticing they are to eat. And it's fun to cook for other people when they're really enjoying it, especially when if they have, aren't used to that, too. That's nice, right. too, to invite your friends in and help introduce them to healthy whole foods. Again, another Start to time to have a party. Yeah is to invite friends and maybe have them bring an ingredient Mm -hmm. to make this amazing meal. Yes, or do a jar salad party. Or each person brings something that then you have this beautiful arrangement of healthy, whole foods that everybody gets to, you know, have a little bit. And everybody's been a part of it. That's like like soul food with body food at the same time. Yeah, I love food and friends. Yeah, and you get to connect. Yeah. Food, friends, family. The best three apps yes. ever. Absolutely. <laughs> Here's another link for um, a big hit in my family, Almond Joy Bites. Um, they are sweetened completely naturally. It's dates as the base, and there's protein in there. Um, I keep them in the freezer myself. I like the texture when I eat them, and they come straight from the freezer. So just some, there are a lot of healthy alternatives out there. It takes preparation and planning. Um, I will say that. You do have mm-hmm. to plan it and prepare, mm-hmm. and you have to be proactive. This is your health. Mm-hmm. So you can't buy it in a package. You have to um, prepare it yourself. Right. But easy. Blender. Most of these are also blender recipes, too. So awesome. easy, not a ton of cleanup. Awesome. We like that. Perfect. Uh, this is a link for honey oat cakes. Um, and slash banana sandwiches. Yes, and banana sandwiches, <laughs> which I, I honestly love. It's so funny. I make things with my children in mind, and then I'm like, oh, my goodness, I totally love this, and then I end up eating them all. Um, this is like a little bowl of oatmeal in or porridge, as I would say, but in a little cake, um, and it's they're sweetened with honey. So really great to add into a lunchbox, mm-hmm. to add as a snack, to add, take to work with you. They're pretty hearty as well, mm. so they really satisfy your appetite. Um, the photo to the right, I simply took the, the little honey oat cakes and I cut them. I put some almond butter and some bananas inside. And then mm. it's just, it's even a little sweeter. Yeah. It's got some nut butter for some extra protein in there. Um, and really delicious. Those are yeah. a huge hit with... Um, the adults in my life and with the, with the children in my life. So hopefully I can see you'll why. try them. Yeah, and fabulous. Give us feedback. We would love to hear uh, from you. If you try the recipes, um, mm-hmm. anything that we're saying, we would love to hear Absolutely. Um, what you have appreciated, what you've benefited from or taken away from, or Absolutely. what you feel that you'd like to hear more of yeah, as well. And what has resonated for you. Yeah. And potentially what have been some of your success stories. Yes, we love with, those. With some of the changes that you've made for a healthier lifestyle. We love to hear that because it just is validating and reaffirming Yes, that anybody can do it. It's important to celebrate your success. Some people mm-hmm. don't like celebrating their own successes. They're uncomfortable with that because they feel like it's not okay to celebrate themselves. Oh. And it is. And when you celebrate yes. yourself... It gives other people mm-hmm. permission to celebrate themselves, and then mm-hmm. everybody gets to celebrate I believe it's together. all about self-love. Yes. You know? <laughs> we should be loving ourselves. Yes. And that means what we eat to how yes. we move to what we think. It's awesome. So we wanted to, I want to just have this slide up, because I know we gave you a lot of information so and a lot much. of different thoughts, and... Um, we didn't want you to feel completely overwhelmed and okay, where do I start? So we were thinking, let's break it down with what are three easy steps to embrace your new lifestyle. New lifestyle. Eat whole foods. Make whole food choices. Drink more water and move your body. Three easy steps to incorporate into your life, to incorporate into your thought patterns as you're making choices. Um, If you do these three things, you will feel the benefits Mm -hmm. in your life. Awesome. So we have had such a great time uh, presenting this webinar to you today. That was actually our last slide. So we hope that you enjoyed it. We hope that you found something that really resonated for you that you can take with you to kind of work on just starting to build a healthier lifestyle or putting something new into maybe your lifestyle you already have. Mm -hmm. 
that you've already created for yourself. Yes. We're hoping you have, can take something, anything away mm. from it, and then maybe come back and, and take something else away from it as well. Yeah. So we did want to um, certainly let you know a couple of things that we are um, actively doing. So if anyone feels like they need help really with the goal setting of making different choices in their life, I have recently recorded a webinar that I will be putting out, and it is called Loving Life My Way. And it is a webinar all about goal setting where I help you step by step on how to do this. And I'll also um, be creating a Facebook uh, private group on goal setting. Um, so you can always kind of um, check that out on my uh, website at empoweredlife.net because I will be putting that information out soon. And if anybody is needing help with um, the beginning process of um, getting off of sugar, I run monthly, I run 10-day reset programs that are whole foods and plant-based. Um, there's tons of food. It's tons of delicious food. It's not a cleanse. Um, it's not a detox. Um, you often will, will reap the benefits of it, but it's really clearing out your system for focus and clarity. Mm -hmm. So I run them on the first of the month, every month, but I also nice. run separate programs individually. Yes. Um, again, with a private face uh, or secret Facebook page. I call it secret. Oh, secret. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that uh, are great for support because you know you're not alone. Um, so that can be done in a um, online with an internet support group system or mm -hmm. it can be done individually with right. me. So you can reach me on Facebook, Sweet, Simple, and Delicious, mm -hmm. um, or through my blog page, which is sweetsimpledelicious.com, and you can contact me through there. Yep. Um, it's been a really successful program. I'm yes. really excited. When I started, I never knew that I would be running it once a month or more than once a month, and um, yeah, it's been really fantastic. Yeah, and both of us certainly are available for individual work together, doing yes. kind of life coaching and holistic yes. coaching. Um, I also have a Facebook page in Empowered Life. Um, and we definitely look forward to seeing you again yes, in the future. Spending more time with you, having yes. healthy talk. Yes. So cheers to you with our fabulous green smoothie. Cheers. Cheers. Wish you all well. Have an empowered day. <laughs>